German car company Volkswagen was fined a huge amount for cheating on diesel engine emission tests. German prosecutors handed down a fine of 926 million against Audi, one of the brands that Volkswagen owns. In 2015, Volkswagen admitted to cheating on the emission tests to make emissions look less toxic than they actually were. A new finding uh, on Audi vehicles increased the total amount of fines Volkswagen will have to pay. The total cost in addition to the fine will be about $32.7 billion to car repairs and retrofits fees and various other fines. On October 17th, Israel struck Gaza and closed their borders. Israel struck 20 targets, killing one Palestinian in Gaza in response to a missile strike by Gaza that launched two missiles before the dawn of that day. One missile hit a family of three children, injuring them and destroying their garden. They were treated for shock on sight. The other landed in the sea and did not injure anyone. The army had been posting to social media and showed a man getting a missile ready near the border before he was hit by a missile strike. Israel said it will stand by their civilians and protect them at all costs. Meanwhile, Hamas, the Palestinian leadership, spoke out against the morning missile strike against Israel, saying it did not want to affect Egypt's help in creating a truce. But Army spokesman Jonathan Kornikulis said Hamas should be held responsible because the rockets fired at Israel could have only come from Hamas or its ally, Palestinian Islamic Jihad. On October 17th, Canada legalized the use of marijuana for buyers who are 18 years and older. Ontario and Toronto will not let pot stores open up until some regulations are reached. But stores will be allowed to open up sometime in the spring of 2019. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau campaigned to make marijuana legal without a prescription for medical use. The United States is now the only country in North America where marijuana has not been decriminalized on the federal level. In Mexico, marijuana was decriminalized in 2009. Marijuana is currently legal in the United States on the state level in nine states. 13 other states have decriminalized the use of the drug. On Wednesday, October 17th, a student in Russia killed 19 at Crimea College. The gunman, 18-year-old Vladislav Rosyakov, who attended the college, entered the school with a shotgun and bomb loaded with shrapnel. The motive for his killing spree is unknown, but students say he was a shy loner. After the attack, which lasted 15 minutes, a total of 15 students were injured. 12 were listed in severe condition, and 19 were confirmed dead. The shooter <laughs> The shooter killed himself before the police could get to him. President Vladimir Putin sent his condolences to the affected families. United States Senator Lindsey Graham spoke out about the accusations against the Saudi Arabian Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. Graham said that the prince has to go and declared a boycott on traveling to Saudi Arabia for as long as bin Salman is in power. Bin Salman was accused of orchestrating the killing of a journalist from the Washington Post who was critical to the prince. The journalist Jamal Khashoggi has not been seen since entering the consulate in Istanbul on October 2nd and is believed to be deceased. President Donald Trump said that he has spoken to the Saudi Arabian officials and has talked about the journalist possibly being killed by rogue killers. What happened to Khashoggi has not yet been determined. On, to, on November 27th, 2015, a greenish light streaked across the desert. It was seen from the Williams Creek camera, which is one of the 32 cameras that forms the Desert Fireball Network in Australia. Some wonder if it was a UFO. After a search, a meteor was found and taken to be researched on by some scientists. The team found out that the meteorite is older than our own planet Earth. Scientists believe that the meteorite is a chindorite, which is one of the most common and most primitive types of meteorites in our solar system. Perhaps someday we'll be able to visit their, where the rock came from. On October 16, Stephanie Clifford, known by her stage name Stormy Daniels, had a defamation case against President Donald Trump, dismissed by a federal judge in Los Angeles. Daniels claims she had a, an affair with President Trump 10 years ago. She sued him April after she posted a sketch of a man who threatened her in 2011. 
President Donald Trump tweeted about the sketch, saying it was a con job. Judge S. James Otero said the tweet was hyperbole. The court dismissed her case and ordered her to pay for President Trump's legal fees. On um, October 15, Facebook announced it will ban fake reports about violence and long lines at polling stations during the November election. Facebook, the largest social media website and app, decided it had to play a part in stopping fake news from being posted on Facebook in part due to influence the social media company may have had during the 2016 presidential election that President Donald Trump won. Company executives said they want to minimize voters' manipulation. The new policy for Facebook was revealed by cybersecurity pol policy chief Nathaniel Gleischer, who said the ban will begin Monday, October 22nd. Heavy rain throughout central Texas caused horrific flooding in the past week. A bridge over the Lando River collapsed on Tuesday and water levels continue to rise. Homes and businesses in the Kingsland are, have been destroyed. Marble Falls and Grand Shores were destroyed as well, with even more rainfall expected to come in the coming days. States and local officials work to manage the flooding before they move further downstream. Manfield Dam, which is 20, 20 miles west of Austin, was created to hold floodwaters back. Waters, the waters now were too strong and were overflowing. At one point, Lake Travis measured just under 700 feet, the sixth highest level it's ever been on record. Lyft has launched a new subscription plan for its taxi service. The company announced it back in March, and now customers can get 30 rides a month for $299. The average fee for a ride is usually $15 or more, which would equate to about $450 on 30 rides without a subscription. This new Lyft subscription also gives customers 5% off all rides after they've used up their 30 rides. Lyft recently announced that they have taken customers for 1 billion rides in their quest to lower the number of vehicles on the road. The company said that having a subscription can save customers of the service 59% of the money that they would have spent on a car for parking, gas, insurance, and much more. On Tuesday, October 16, President Donald Trump and U.S. Senator and potential 2020 presidential candidate Elizabeth Warren continued their hostilities online. Senator Warren, who has said she has Native American ancestry, announced she had taken a DNA test. The test confirms she has Native American ancestry, but it doesn't exactly determine whether she, whether her ancestors were North American or South American natives. The test shows she has a Native American ancestor six to ten generations back, which would make her one in 64th and one 1024th American Native American. Nestor Senator Warren took the test after years of President Trump calling her Pocahontas. The president even offered one cents one million dollars to charity if Senator Warren could improve the ancestry, but he has since denied ever making the claim despite video proof. Though Senator Warren thought the issue was now handled, the Cherokee Nation released a statement speaking out against the DNA test. The Cherokee Nation and does not list Senator Warren as a descendant of the tribe, said the senator's test undetermined tribal interest. The senator said she does not list herself as an official Native American in the Senate. As for the cents $1 million, President Trump says he will not donate the money if he was able to personally administer a DNA test to Senator Warren. On Friday, October 12, a white woman accused a young black boy of sexually assaulting her. 53-year-old Teresa Klein was at a convenience store in Brooklyn, New York, where she said she flew out the little boy's hand brush her backside. Klein called the cops on the nine-year-old, accusing him of groping her. But the surveillance cameras in the store showed the boy's hands in clear sight, and he never touched her. It was likely his backpack brushed against Klein as he walked behind her. A camera phone recorded Klein calling the police as the boy and his sister cried. The video went viral and Klein was given a name by the internet, Cornerstone Caroline. After seeing the surveillance video, Klein admitted she had the details wrong and sent an apology out to the young boy. After years of struggling, Sears filed for bankruptcy on October 15th. 
a judge approved the $300 million in financing to keep the department store holding open through the holidays. The company filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in White Plains, New York, and will look to close 142 of its 700 stores by the end of the year. Their best performing stores will be sold in auction on January. The bankruptcy was filed by the parent company, which oversees Sears and Kmart. Sears has close to 70,000 employees and has not turned a profit since 2011. Even with billionaire Eddie Lampert acquiring it for $11 billion, Lampert was the hedge fund manager when he was kidnapped and held for ransom. He escaped and went on to invest in Kmart, which he became a major shareholder of. Sears merged with Kmart, but while Kmart turned out to be a good investment, Sears has not. Lampert stepped down from CEO on October 15th, but will remain as chairman. On Friday, October 12th, a little girl was burned by a little Caesar's pizza that was cooked at a temperature of 550 degrees. The parents, Cody and Wade and Dunn, were driving home from their children's grandparents' house, but ended up stopping at Little Caesar's in Lawrenceville. After receiving the pizza from the drive through window, the mother, Cody, passed the box to her two sons in the back seat. One of the boys grabbed a slice of pizza, spilling a bit of sauce and cheese on their sister's two-year-old Jordan. Jordan was taken to the hospital where she was treated for second-degree burns. The pizzas are cooked extremely high temperatures and cooled off in another area where they are kept under a constant heat. Employees at the Little Caesars said that they were in a rush and gave the family a pizza directly out of the first oven. Co-founder of Microsoft, Paul Allen, has passed away on October 15th. Bill Gates paid tribute to Allen, saying that he was a passionate person who held his friends and family dear. Gates also said Allen was a brilliant technologist and philanthropist who wanted to complete great things. Gates and Allen founded Microsoft together in 1975. The company is now a household name thanks to its Windows Office and Xbox brands. The co-founders met at Lakeside in Seattle when they were in their early teens. Allen's father worked as an associate director of libraries at the University of Washington, which gave Allen the opportunity to spend time in the computer science laboratory with Gates and other friends. Allen named the company Microsoft by combining the words microcomputer and software. The company was created to develop software and new types of microcomputers. Allen left the company, his co-founder, due to his health reasons. He passed away from complications with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Reports say singer Ariana Grande has called off her engagement with comedian Pete Davidson. No reason has been mentioned, but sources say the breakup was caused by the death of Grande's ex-boyfriend, Mac Miller. Grande, who did not attend the BET Awards, has also left social media saying she needs time to heal. Davidson, who is a cast member of for Saturday Night Live, has stayed quiet on the subject. Grande was seen at a charity event without her ring and band-aid over a tattoo related to Davidson. On October 17th, Carol Spinney, the puppeteer for Sesame Street's Big Bird, announced his retirement. A former U.S. Air Force pilot, Spinney has always been voicing and playing the character on the show since it first began in 1969. Spinney has been interested in puppeteering since he was five years old. For his work, he received two Grammy honors, six Emmy Awards, a Lifetime Achievement Emmy Award, a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and the Library of Congress Living Legends Award. On his Twitter, Spinney said that Big Bird gave him a purpose and made him feel important. And though he's stepping down, he will still feel like Big Bird. And even Oscar at times, Matt Vogel will now perform as Big Bird, while Eric Jacobson will perform as Oscar the Grouch. After years of will he or won't he, the new solo Batman movie will officially not feature Ben Affleck as Batman. Warner Bros. is now looking to get a different actor to play Batman in the DCU and for the director Matt Reeves' new movie titled The Batman. Affleck was originally slated to direct and write his own Batman movie after appearing as the character in Batman vs Superman and Justice League. But since Reeves took over, plans have gone out the window. The new script for the Batman movie calls for a younger version of Bruce Wayne. Fans liked Affleck for the role, but rumors about him leaving the DCU have followed him for years. On October 12th, Netflix announced that Marvel's Iron Fist would not be making a return for the third season. Iron Fist was about a young man named Daniel Rand who is a master martial artist. He holds the power of the Iron Fist. The show was likely canceled because of low ratings and views. Critics on Rotten Tomatoes rated Iron Fist's first season a 19% and fans were vocal about the dislike for the show. 
Its second season, however, was better received after the show brought in new showrunner Raven Metzner. Here's a song of the week where we at the Fan Link share what we've been listening to. The song for this week is Rick Astley, Never Gonna Give You Up, which was released in 1987. In the song, Rick Astley sings about being loyal to a special someone. Never Gonna Give You Up charted in 25 countries and was voted number 28 on VH1's top 50 most awesomely bad songs ever. This song became a part of a phenomenon called Rick Rolling. Rick Rolls happen when viewers are surprised by a clip of the video when there is a build up to something else. This is for anyone who's there for someone. Alleged reports came in from Davis, California's Da Vinci Chapter Academy High School on October 17 that some students brought homemade cookies with human ashes inside. According to witness reports, two girls brought the cookies and up to nine students ate them. The police investigations have led them to believe the girls put one of their grandparents' remains into the cookies. None of the afflicted students fell ill to eating the cookies. However, students may have been emotionally affected, says the school. As of now, the police do not know why the girls baked these cookies, but the principal did say that it is a personal family matter now. A Seaside City Council member's husband was arrested early Monday for suspicion of domestic violence. Ryan Gibson, 26 years old, was arrested on suspicion of domestic violence. His wife, Kayla Jones, is running to become Seaside's next mayor. Gibson was arrested at 1 a.m. on October 15th by Presidio of Monterey Police Officers was, and was booked at the Monterey County Jail. His bail was set at $20,000. Gibson spoke out on his wife's behalf to defend his wife's reputation during several investigations. A former city council member accused Kayla Jones of abusing her power by using her city-funded purchasing card. Jones spent more than $20,000 on childcare, food, and travel. On Thursday, October 11th, at around 7 p.m., three cars were involved in an accident. A silver Mitsubishi traveling northbound on Salinas Road suddenly lost control and crossed over the median into the southbound lane. The car collided with oncoming traffic. The driver of the Mitsubishi was killed in the crash. Others were treated for minor injuries, with several people being sent to the Natividad Medical Center. Most of us love our pets, and we would never wish to hurt them. Sadly, that was not the case for 22-year-old Devante Sorwet from Soledad, California, who burned his dog alive. Sorwet had a past of substance abuse and anger issues, which led him to being kicked out of, of his mother's house. Sometime in December 2017, Sorwet later returned to his mother's house to take the family dog, Kato. Witnesses claim they saw Sorwet pour lighter fluid on the family dog before he lit the pet on fire. Sorwet then left the dog in the vehicle to burn alive. The poor dog was left with severe burns on 90% of his body and had to be euthanized. Sorwet was sen sentenced to six years and eight months in prison, the maximum sentence. It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. For those who don't know what Breast Cancer Awareness Month is, it's a month to raise awareness and educate people on the symptoms and treatments for breast cancer. Breast cancer is mainly found in women, but it also affects men. Over 200,000 women will be diagnosed with breast cancer, and it will lead to 40,000 people to dying of breast cancer this year. What do you think of breast cancer? I think, uh, I think everybody should be checked at a certain age when their doctor tells them. I do have a friend that five years ago, she had a Down syndrome baby, and when her baby was three months, she was diagnosed with breast cancer. So it's kind of scary. I've also had a sister-in-law that has passed away from breast cancer, but I think it's very important we get checked and we are more aware of the research that's out there. I think it's a terrible thing and uh, there should be like more awareness for it because not a lot of people know like what, what kind of things it could do to a person. Well, I think breast cancer is a very important issue and it's not um, something to be taken lightly because a lot of people are affected by it and I think it's serious and should be really known and we should try our best to like help people who have lost loved ones to it and help people who are going through it. 
What can you do to raise awareness? Uh, wear pink to remind women um, of how the importance of being checked and getting their mammogram. Uh, just because you're a female doesn't mean that men can't get it either. So you need to be very aware of any growth and see your doctor. Um, you could just go around uh, supporting like in October. Uh, there's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so they, there's always giving out things like ribbons and stickers and stuff like that. Wear pink, so show your support. Well, I guess you could, uh, I could like wear pink, like wear pink clothing or pink ribbons and um, pins and all that. And maybe just tell people about personal experiences that like I've had um, with my loved ones who have had it. And yeah. It's breast cancer awareness. So make sure you wear pink in support of those survivors and to raise awareness about testing. But don't eat while like talking, okay? If a plane crashes on the border between the United States and Canada, where do they bury the survivors? So, the, the plane crashes in in between the border of okay and how like 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 this or like yeah. that? This line, yeah, yeah. crayon. <laughs> I don't know this one, right? Prison with the five. Hey, pass me this. Now the real question here is: able a girl or a boy? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta give a quick shout out to the boy Iggy. That's pretty funny. <laughs> um, nobody knows that question, honestly. Not even I know that question, and I am like the one that asks them. Okay, ready? Omar, what is what is the national capital? The national capital? Yes. <laughs> England. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Name five major cities. What for? That's the question. Um, Los Angeles. That's one. Gonzales. Is it? No. No, Gonzales is not a major city. Ask it out. No, I did it. Now we have to sit. Um, Los Angeles, Sacramento. Mm -hmm. Any more? I'm trying to look. San Juan Batista. I don't know that. Did I say Sacramento? San Francisco. Omar's house. Wait a minute. All right, we're done here. Wait, what? We're done. We're done. Thank you. Thank you, Iggy. So, what do you like about your team? What do I like about our team? I like the fact that we we work hard. We uh, we don't get overconfident. We don't get complacent. We continue to challenge ourselves every week just work hard. Do you think your team is going to the playoffs? Uh, absolutely. I mean, what kind of question is that? All right. Um, how does it feel bringing up our team to victory? Uh, it's great. I think it's great for our school. It's great for the program, of course. It's great for the uh, community. Um, we have a very rich tradition of, of, of football and Spartan pride and that big G. So uh, it feels great. Do you think that next year we'll still be undefeated? I don't know about all that. Every year is different. Every year is different. We can't uh, undefeated. I don't like that word. Uh, every week's a new challenge, and we don't look we don't look past the first, the, the game we're playing. So we, we play Stevenson this Saturday, and that's what we're focusing on right now. So we got to be nine and zero before we can be ten and zero. True. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so how does it feel being part of an undefeated team? It feels cool, actually. Like if it just feels good winning. My other years, I played football. My freshman year, we went one and nine. We only both part JV and varsity. Um, we only won one game. Last year, I was able to play varsity. We only we only won three games. We went three and seven. And then this year, we're eight and zero, starting off. It feels cool. Well, damn, that's crazy. Um, do you think that you guys are going to make it to the playoffs? Um, definitely, we we do. But for right now. Um, we play um, RLS, and that game's important because it's a ch pretty much a championship game. Whoever wins from there is first place in the league, and then um, whoever wins that game goes to the playoffs. Well, thank you. 
How does it feel helping your? How does it feel helping out your by leading your team to victory? Mm, it feels good knowing that. I mean, we're eight and zero, so whatever we're doing is our road to success, I guess. All right. Um, if you guys make it to the playoffs, do you guys think that you and your team will win? Of course. I mean, we put in a lot of time, a lot of work, so I'd expect I'd expect us to take it all. I, I know we can. All right. Um. The coach that you guys have right now, I see the reason why you guys are undefeated. I mean, yeah, he's a, he's a really good coach coming from Hartnell. He knows he knows what he's talking about. He came from, he's a defensive coordinator, or he was a defensive coordinator for Hartnell. So now him being the offensive coordinator, you know, he, he knows a lot about defense. So when you know both sides of the ball, it, it, it makes it good for the team. All right, well, thank you. That's all. All right, so how does it feel being part of an undefeated team? Feels good coming from our past. We don't even win a lot of games. Um, do you guys think that you guys are going to the playoffs? Yeah, this is a game that's going to determine if we go to the playoffs. So we're, we're practicing hard this week. Broke an all-time record, right? Yeah. Can you tell them which one it was? I broke the single season rushing yard record. And how do you feel about it? I felt great and knew I could do it by the beginning of the season. I just want to get more yards. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah.